After three weeks, the fierce battle in the Pennsylvania GOP Senate primary is over. David McCormick conceded Friday to Trump-endorsed candidate Dr. Oz. The ballots were recounted last week, and ultimately, the Trump favorite bested McCormick by only 972 votes. Oz took to Twitter following his victory, tweeting this, I received a gracious phone call from David McCormick, and I'm tremendously grateful for his pledge of support in the fall election. We share the goal of a brighter future for Pennsylvania and America. So he'll go up against progressive John Fetterman in the fall. Joining us to discuss is Hill reporter Julia Manchester and Real Clear Politics White House reporter Philip Wegman. Welcome to you both. Thank you. So, Julia, I'll start with you. I, and I'm sure you know Republicans are relieved to finally um, have a candidate at all. Uh, however, the Democrats have to be a little bit uh, concerned given all the news about Fetterman's health. And I, I thought Fetterman was going to make an extremely strong general election uh, candidate. But obviously, you know, with all that's going on uh, with him, uh, his, his ability even to campaign seems very diminished. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on what's going on? Look, I think the health of a candidate is always very important and talked about during campaigns. I mean, going back to 2008 when, uh, you know, political watchers questioned John McCain's uh, health being a very um, old person running for president. And we know that obviously in 2020, both the health of President Trump and uh, pres uh, now President Biden were both questioned given their ages that they were running for president. So I think right now um, with someone like John Fetterman, who is younger, and who is having these health issues, that definitely raises some concern as to how much he will be out in the field and really doing that retail politic campaigning. Because we know that at least going from the GOP side of the aisle, enthusiasm was incredibly high during that closed primary. Now, the enthusiasm was also high on the Democratic side, but I think it will take both candidates really going out to not only rev up their own bases, but also turn out uh, the voters in the middle. So it's obviously something to really watch out for, but I think you are going to see the Democratic campaign apparatus really um, from the top down coming out and trying to support Fetterman as much as possible. Pennsylvania is really turning out to be probably the closest, if not one of the most watched Senate races and important Senate races this cycle. And what do you think, Philip? I think looking at this race from the other side of the aisle, the takeaway here is that Donald Trump is a weak kingmaker. He comes in and he endorses Oz, and then this comes down to the wire by about uh, 970 votes. I'm not, I, I don't remember the exact figure, uh, but um, you know, it, it's interesting because in Oz, you have a candidate who a lot of conservatives are very hesitant about. Certainly, he has the star power like the former president did, uh, but on a number of different policy issues that conservatives have long held close to their heart, whether it's the, uh, the abortion question or whether or not it's guns. Um, you can compare and contrast the current position that Oz holds with a position that he took uh, back when he was on daytime television. Um, adding also to sort of the the drama here is that you had uh, Trump sort of try and stave off a, a populist candidate who is more in the mold of, of him, uh, Kathy Barnett. And she sort of made this argument that she, um, you know, was, was, was the true MAGA uh, uh, dark horse in this race. And, and, and you know, after Trump sort of uh, washed his hands of her candidacy, uh, she seemed to argue that MAGA was, was bigger than him. So you've got all sorts of different threads to, uh, to pull on here. What I'm going to be watching uh, as we get closer to this race is whether or not Mastriano, the uh, Republican nominee for governor, someone who is very much in Trump's image when it comes to his eagerness to relitigating the, the 2020 election. In fact, this guy was even at the Capitol on January 6th. Uh, what I'm watching is to see if he's a drag on Oz and if he um, sort of diminishes some of the increased turnout that we saw during the primary. Mm. That's a very interesting perspective. I think I would have been inclined to think that because this was a Trump endorsed candidate and he won that that looked favorably for Trump. But that's an excellent point you bring up. It is a small, a small margin. So I'm going to I'm going to stick with that point as someone who's not pro Trump. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I you know, the other interesting thing in this race is that uh, so Dr. Oz uh, is, uh, is Muslim, would be, I, I think, the first Muslim s senator, right, if, if elected. And 
you know, it's it's funny when you know these milestones are cleared by Republicans, just you know, despite the uh, the first uh, a, a male Muslim, despite the. You know, the Republicans are anti-Islam, Trump in particular, you know, a hostility to foreigners and, and all sorts of things, the rhetoric. Uh, d you know, does this, is this just another one of those little indications, Julia, that really the Republican Party is, it is putting together a, a multiracial uh, working class kind of, it's not just you know, only only affluent white people or something anymore. It, it, it in some ways pull uh, it is is pulling in the kind of range of diversity that Democrats are struggling to keep as part of their coalition. Yeah, I think you could definitely see that argument coming from Republicans, especially when they talk about Dr. Oz. Now, Dr. Oz is obviously someone who is very affluent. He is a celebrity, but I could definitely see them uh, talking about the diversity he brings to the table. What's interesting and in taking a step back is to see how the RNC in particular has been really pushing uh, for diversity in the Republican Party, particularly among African Americans, Hispanics, and Asian Americans. We saw in California during the 2020 uh, cycle that Republicans, uh, Young Kim and Michelle Steele, for example, were very much trying to cater towards that Asian American community in Southern California, and they did very well with that. And we saw the same thing with the Hispanic community in Southern Texas on the border, as well as in South Florida, and Republicans saw gains. Now, talking to the RNC, they are very much trying to make uh, some sort of an inroad with the African American community, but it's not lost on them that that would definitely be um, a bit of a tall order to accomplish this cycle that will take time and lots of years, because we know that the black community has really been a back bone of the Democratic vote. So I think it sort of shows how Republicans are absolutely trying to tout diversity because they know that in order to survive, in order to get more votes in a country that is diversifying, they need to have candidates and voters that reflect that. I think often a lot of criticism of diversity, especially from progressives and on the left, is that it's in appearance only, right? It doesn't really make a difference if you get a room and you get a bunch of people that may look different, but the views and the ide ideologies and what's being espoused is the same. And I think that people might see that like this, in this a, a situation like this. Yes, Dr. Oz is Muslim, but still, right? but still, and the different viewpoints. So I'm not sure if I would give this as uh, Republicans being diverse. But or, if Democrats know, only have a skin deep commitment to diversity anyway. I don't then... necessarily disagree with you, Robin. <laughs> Trust me, I don't, I don't. I do not disagree with you, but I, I, I would argue that Republicans are worse. <laughs> uh, Phil, do, are Democrats just like, Think, looking at obviously, we wish you know Fetterman all the uh, re best, greatest recovery in the world. And again, I, I think he was, uh, he is a very uh, 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 strong general election candidate. So to have him kind of, uh, kind of you know, not being able to run the, the you know the strongest race he possibly can for for what seem like kind of significant health issues, just it has to is like an. Ex Example that the Democratic Party is just like cursed right now. Some black mage put a <laughs> put a dark spell on them, or I, I, what do you think? It's another crisis for these guys. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm clearly I'm, I'm getting into like Dungeons and Dragons mode, which I have later today. But go, go ahead. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's a path that you will go down that I will not follow. Um, <laughs> So I'm really curious to see how, how Fetterman uh, does. Uh, there was the note from his physician saying that if he made a, a couple of different tweaks to um, you know, his routine, that, that he would be healthy enough to run for the Senate. And then if he elected, uh, serve there. You know, we'll find out, right? And we, we all wish him nothing but the best. What's interesting about this guy is that he talks like a progressive, but he looks like a Trump supporter, right? I mean, you're not gonna see uh, the Lieutenant Governor of Pennsylvania show up to a fish fry in jeans and a, a blue uh, you know, button down shirt with the sort of standard issue politician, I'm a normal person look, you know? <laughs> um, there, there's some legitimacy uh, to, the, to this guy. Uh, you know, his health is a, is a big question though, right? And I think that we've been through this type of news cycle before. Uh, Julia laid it out really well, whether or not it was Trump or Biden, or even Bernie Sanders, who, who had a, a health scare as well with his heart. But, you know, as we've seen, Bernie Sanders is not going anywhere, uh, much to right. the chagrin of both, uh, you know, Republicans and Democrats. I think this will be a interesting race. Um, and I think that, you know, Fetterman will make Oz 
uh, work for it. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is going to come down to, you know, perhaps, um, you know, another photo finish like we saw in the Republican primary. I suspect so. Well, Julia, Phil, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be back with more Rising in just a minute.